good? Okay, we're good. Okay, we're good. All right. I will repeat, call the uh, September Finance Committee meeting to order. And the first order of business is compliance with the open meeting law. We did that? Yes, we did. Okay. And the meeting agenda, any comments on the meeting agenda? Okay. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the next item on the agenda is public comments. If anybody has a comment on something that's not on the agenda, we'll hear it now. <laughs> so I'm better mute. Well, I think I think Linda has her hand up. I do. I think so too. Yes. You want to unmute? Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have a general comment to make about the budget process, and then I would also like to ask to be recognized uh, when you get into the EMS budget discussion. What concerns me is that um, as a major policy decision the county board is making, the exhibits that um, I see that went through committee and possibly what you're getting this morning our budget to budget comparisons. There are, are no columns for prior year actuals or where things stand to date and projected for this year end. So I don't know how helpful it is to make a decision based on budget to budget uh, comparisons. And then my comments regarding EMS later on will have to do with um, the town of Edgewater who is served by the Birchwood Four Corners Emergency Services District. Uh, continues to be uh, allocated. Uh, I believe last year the amount was $66,000. Um, and it basically it's a mutual aid situation and Birchwood has been responding to Sawyer County calls as well as Sawyer County responding to some Edgewater calls. And also there has been nothing available for the public to view regarding the EMS billing to the Washburn County towns, and uh, there was a significant discussion at public safety about that. So, would like to comment on that later. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda are minutes from uh, last month's meeting. Motion is made, and Mr. Kinsley, Mr. Duffy, second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Oh, any objections, nay? Motion carried. All right, the next item is the resolution to increase the capital improvements for maintenance. Who wants to discuss that? Tim is here, can make some comments on that one. Yeah, basically what, uh, what we're wanting to do is um, to take the skid steer that we have right now that assists us in snow removal and then some other landscaping kind of work. And uh, uh, we kind of like to trade that in on a, or sell the skid steer to highway. And uh, cause they're, they're in need of a, they were looking to purchase a new skid steer. Then we'd like to buy a small articulated loader that would have a, a sidewalk room, a snow blower, a box plow and a bucket so that it would, do the jobs that we're currently doing with the skid steer, but the skid steer we can't run on the sidewalks during the winter for snow because uh, uh, weight of the skid steer it marks it up because of, because of the turning the type that it does, and uh, and plus you have so much steel around you that even with the backup camera on it, uh, rear camera that we installed, uh, you wouldn't want to run it around pedestrians and. The small articulated loader that we're looking at uh, has good visibility because they're designed to be on sidewalks uh, around people. Um, and it would get us, it'd be more efficient for one thing because it would get our guys off of uh, manually removing snow like we are now. Uh, I can just put an operator out there and then uh, it also would cut down on the risk of uh, potential injury out there during the winter. Okay. Yeah. Uh, General regulation. All right, there's a motion to approve the purchase. Uh, motion to 
submit and second it. Uh, any discussion? Yeah, just wanted to comment. Uh, you know, this uh, past public works uh, last evening as well, and, and this provides the funding. You know, rather than putting it in the CIP next year, um, uh, Jim was very uh, proactive and and coming up with a way to uh, work around what we had available and and uh, make a, a good decision on saving us some money and getting uh, a couple pieces of equipment that we need. So uh, hats off to Jim. Okay, we're going to take some out of the fund balance. Correct. Well, we are, yes, but in addition to that, I think Tim has been putting a lot of stuff on the auction um, yeah. to help offset some of that. That's right. Okay. Um, Carol, did you by chance get the resolution from last night that the committee may have signed? Um, last night, Cindy had it and oh, we all signed it. Probably the amendment on Okay. okay. All right, so we've got a motion on the floor. We're we have discussion. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor, aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Thank you. Do you want to go right now? Would you mind? Not at all. Okay, it should be so, just a stack on the corner. You can bring me the whole stack. All right, so we've got that. We shouldn't sign this one. Yes. There's another one coming. Okay, good. All right. So Mike and Tom, are you guys going to handle the next one? Yeah, did Brian get online by chance or? Brian was. That, that's probably the 414 number. Yeah. Yeah, that would be more handy. Yep. So Brian um, is traveling to another meeting this morning, but he was gracious enough to uh, take the call while he was in route. I don't, Brian, do we have you? Hi, Mike. Hi, Brian. Um, you want to just kind of start with the uh, model that you put out there? Okay. Sure. So um, this is the second version of a model that uh, takes an estimate of your operating levy and makes an estimate of your debt service levy based on um, some expected future borrowing amounts and a um, structure that um, I put together that I thought was reasonable. And, you know, I think as I said last time, you know, sometimes I, you know, I just put something together I think is reasonable. And, uh, you know, from that point, it's easy, I think, for policymakers to offer, you know, you know, edits or suggestions to, to how they, you know, can tweak it or how it can be tweaked to meet their, uh, you know, their objectives. So the version that you see today in your packet, um, you know, all on the green, that's your operating levy, that's growing at the, at, at the sort of net new construction. So that just grows at 0.7% was our estimate. And uh, I worked with Mike on, in the area in the blue, getting some, um, getting some new borrowing amounts and in, 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 in for the respective years. So, <clears throat> um, based on these new borrowing amounts, um, which is a little bit less this fall and a little bit more for the for the courthouse than, than I had uh, previously put in uh, the last version of this model. Um, what we have here is uh, an example where uh, the, the county's total levy would go up by 5% a year for four years, and then it would go uh, back down to, um, you know, basically just uh, growing closer just at the rate of net new construction. Um, and this, so, so basically what we have here is a ramp up for, for four years for these new projects. The projects would be, uh, on the, on the, would be amortized over uh, either two, three years or, uh, or for the big courthouse borrowing 20 years. And, uh, you know, and uh, you know the, the cost to the taxpayers would be five percent a year, 
and um, and you know an important point is that would still allow for ongoing project borrowings um, in the amount of uh, I think that's about two million dollars a year. Uh, I'm sorry, I actually have a little trouble reading that. <laughs> um, but in that peach column, that last number, uh, uh, I don't have my reading glasses on. <laughs> so whatever that last number, it looks like about two million ninety-eight thousand is where that uh, is that gets to to grow to. So there's a, there's just some extra projects that you haven't been used to doing. They're bigger than usual. They're you you absorb it and you you put it on. You can keep the the tax levy up by five percent. There's nothing magic about five, but five works. You know, we could do five percent for four years, or we could do you know roughly four percent for five years. You know, I mean that's you know kind of a similar math. And uh, and then you can start borrowing just on those real short six month borrowings on an uh, annual basis for a certain amount of capital. And you know, and then you won't be raising your Levy based on um, sort of regular capital borrowing, or you know, on a, on a basis, you know, on a regular basis. Now, if you do another seven million dollar project, that may or may not be able to uh, be absorbed in the um, in the sort of no or modest increase in the in the levy. But uh, you know, but that's uh, but there is quite a there is quite a large in in my opinion, there's quite a significant amount of of uh, annual borrowing that you would get to do. And the increase to the taxpayers in this model is five percent a year, um, and there's nothing magical about that. But we, you know, but it is, uh, you know, I thought start with an example, and if they want to see changes, it's easy to change based on direction from the county. Well, Bruce, can I just highlight a couple things? Yeah, I have a couple um, questions. Go ahead. So looking at the top. Uh, in the blue where it says proposed projects for the 2020 borrowing 2021 projects capital improvement 340,000 uh, highway capital 600 the total is a million four that's what we're going right now when we, when we get the next agenda item you kind of that that corresponds to where we're at right now in the budget process but I want to point out going forward, those numbers, those are just estimates. Nothing hard about those numbers at this time. But those are the two numbers that going forward from a budget perspective, we're looking at borrowing annually. Um, the dams flow, those are just kind of one time expenditure. Um, and I don't know beyond 2020, I don't know if there's more coming down the road yet or not, uh, but those are just one time. And um, 2000, we had out one year. And the second large courtroom, the way it's split on here, um, total showing 7 million, that's an estimate, we don't know when we're going to know the hard number and at one time it was hoped that construction could maybe start towards the latter end of next year don't know if that's going to happen but for this purpose we split it two million expenditures next year five million the following year that may change it may all go to that third year out there i, I don't know but the way this two million is set up in the 2020 projects now, You'll see that this model is set up so that two million of the seven actually paid off in three years. And the following year we borrowed the five million and that goes out to 20. We're paying off some of it very rapidly. And the remainder is pushed up. Um, I, I, I bring that up just because I think that's a significant savings right. interest. <clears throat> Um, the 2% of borrowing, 2% interest rate, is that, where does that come from? Is that from the uh, Board of Commissioners for Public Land folks? No, um, that's Brian, I guess. I 
I haven't heard exactly what the rate might be from a local bank. Yeah, well, the local Other bank says, I think I mentioned before, one of the local bankers says two and a half percent. Yep, and he, he, I had a conversation with him and I told him that the local pool is two and a half. Right. His comment to me at the time was, we can do better. Than that. Okay. But he didn't give the rate. Okay, so. They probably need somewhere between two and two and a half percent on an interest rate. I would assume. That. Okay. Um, Mike, so the increase our levy run by five percent, the gentleman saying goes here in what is that, twenty twenty one with those next four years. You're gonna be able to Back that first two million three years in that increase. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I mean that would save a substantial amount of interest. And so um, we're kind of getting down to the point where and I would maybe wait till we go through the next agenda item or two, but um, we kind of need some direction on which way we're going to go on the debt. Are we looking at the three year plan? Are we looking at quarter term, borrow it and repay it next calendar year? Okay. Well, this is laid out so we would borrow for two years, correct? Or cover the 2020. Point the project and that interest expense is down substantially. It was at the rental rate 80,000 in the first model, but now we're uh, right because we've changed the numbers right. in the projects, they've come down a little bit, right? Interest rates come down some, I think probably two percent is not realistic, but if we're talking half a percent, probably different. So what I was looking at short term borrowing tax increases up to what? Around seven, eight. For me, this five percent tax increase is extra, a little extra. I kind of like this model. And we'll get into more of the details here in a few minutes. So, what we have to do is we're working with the Florida District. So, I ran, well, I ran an amortization. I used this name for a and I ran it for three months. Um, borrowing the same one million four, and it would be five thousand dollars for three months at two percent. Okay. And what is it for three years? Well, it'd be two years. That first one would be two years, almost, and it's almost sixteen thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Eleven thousand dollars. Yeah. Again, I think you know there, there's pros and cons to each approach. The short term, probably going to save some interest, but we're probably a little bit year to year on the tax rate, you know, mm -hmm. up and down. Right. This model, you're, you're probably going to pay a little more interest, but it's it's smoothing it out and kind of developing kind of a long term plan mm -hmm. to uh, move forward with. Right. Question. Sure. What if? For the first year, we we turned around and repaid it immediately, and then we could always revisit it if we wanted to spread it out, can't we? Yep. Yep. But it would mean I think our tax increase would be more than five percent, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know, and so, I mean, that's my concern. I mean, you know, five percent to me is manageable for the public, but you get above six percent, like. 
my phone is going to be really ringing, that's for sure. Yeah. And yes. we're gonna... what, is, what is the monetary value of 5% increase per 100,000? I know you guys shot that number out. What is that difference, Bruce? Do you know? Ballpark? No. But, well, you've got the levy rate per 100,000, per thousand, you know, in the last column. Yeah. So if you just multiply that, you know, move the decimal point over a couple of places, that'll be a hundred thousand. So, okay, let's see. Um, kind of to answer your question, and this kind of gets into the next agenda right. item, but that one million four thousand dollars right now represents about an eight and a half percent increase over 2020's total levy. If so, if we paid it all off within the three months, total increase, levy increase would be about eight and a half percent versus plan here, spreading it a little bit brings it down to five percent. I'm liking the keeping it down part very much. Yeah. So what do we want to do? Do we want to move to the next budget agenda item and revisit this or? Yeah, because I think this will come back into. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I don't know if Brian wants to hang on and bear with us or? It's up to him. If he knows what, he's, uh, that, what his issue is. Yeah. Um, Ryan, are you there? He's on mute right now. Oh. Daryl, can you on mute? Brian? Hi, guys. Hi, Brian. I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm unmuted. Okay. <laughs> so um, we're going to kind of move on to more of the budget discussion. Did you want to? Did you have maybe a, some additional comments you wanted to make, or do you want to stay with us, or do you want to? Um, sign out for now well let me ask you are there um i'm going to be in the car for about another half an hour is there anything did you have any questions for me it sounded like what i heard is there was a little bit it sounded like from at least some of the supervisors that the that some are more manageable you know maybe paying the debt off over the two years to start so you could keep the levy at about five percent or something like that was was preferable i don't know if that was uh, if that was just a, a, if there was a consensus there or not. Um, I think we're going to talk some of the details of the budget and then we're kind of probably going to circle back to that question. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll just be, uh, I'll just be, I'll be driving for the next half hour. So I'll just be listening until then and let me know if you need anything by about 930. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Brian. You bet. Okay, so now we're what, down to page seven in the budget, in the community packet. Is that where you're going to go? Agenda item nine. nine. Yeah, I was, I was just looking at the budget packet. Oh, oh. I mean, not the budget packet, the committee packet. So you're on the so requested levy schedule. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Um, Tom, did you want to make any comments to start us or not? Or, or just jump in and go? Or? Just jump in and I'll chime in as we go here. Okay. Um, all right, so the, re the requested levy schedule, um, just a couple things. The top section is overview of the operating levy. The bottom section is the special purpose levy and then some calculations at the bottom. The uh, adopted 2020 column shows you where we are for 2020. The far right column, administrator 2021 column, shows you where we are now. This is levy. A um, couple things I want to point out in the operating levy section. Under human services, you see their levy 
request in, was an increase of 762,000. Um, in discussions with them, they are budgeting for uh, Winnebago, Mendota expenditures for next year. Um, they're anticipating those increasing substantially. Um, we have, they, they made the levy request for that. We're saying we can't afford the levy on that. We're shifting it to fund balance for 2021. Um, if they don't tap into that fund balance this year, they'll have enough fund balance for next year to cover that. So we're, we're shifting it to fund balance for next year. Well, what is the fund balance roughly? It's roughly a million dollars. This is health and human services fund balance. Yes. Okay. I can speak more to that, Mike. Sure. Um, yeah, we did have this discussion at uh, Health and Human Services as well. Uh, Health and Human Services, uh, we had meetings with that department. Um, you know, basically came in with a, a zero percent increase on their services that they provide. Uh, the one area that um, gets away from us is those out of county placements, both uh, Winnebago and the child welfare placements. Um, and we haven't budgeted those to the, the cost we're now incurring. So the attempt here is to recognize that uh, we haven't kept up the budget for those costs, but yet, you know, those are costs we really have no control over uh, as we do like with the other services. So, um, you know, that's, that's one of the things that we talk with our legislators about constantly um, to help with that funding. Those are costs that the state has pushed down on the counties. Uh, but yet the counties have no control over uh, how those monies are spent. Uh, we just uh, get that taken out of our uh, reimbursements from the state and it is what it is. So um, it, it's certainly an issue, um, an issue that we're trying to, to recognize here by budgeting for it. So it's in the budget at a higher amount than it had been previously, uh, which kind of resets the base for next year as well. Um, and we did talk about uh, this in health and human services from the perspective of, um, you know, can we cut three quarters of a million dollars of services now when we've got a million dollars of fund balance? You know, this is like the last card to play um, to, uh, to keep those services up the way we've been providing them. Uh, unless we get some legislative help or anything else, then, uh, you know, we're going to have to make some other changes. Um, you know, either in health and human services budget or the way we budget other departments. Um, and, and we can talk more about that when we get to highway. But, you know, that's the perspective we took in health and human services. Um, they're in agreement with that. Uh, it is, you know, a concerning uh, situation, obviously. But uh, at this point, uh, we think that's the best alternative for that department. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, the other one I want to touch on is highway. Um, the highway levy based on what we adopted for 2020, the levy request came in 360,000 higher. Um, so what we're doing there, a couple things going on. Um, one, there's a the County E bridge, the one lane bridge that has to be repaired. Um, it is budgeted in, budgeted in the 2021 budget, but it's budgeted to come out of levy um, with the chance that there could be grant funding to cover this, but we won't know, I believe, until next year. So we, we, we need to come up with an alternative. So 128,000 of that is the bridge. Um, we're trying to set it up now, and I'll show you below, but we're going to add that 128,000 um, to the borrowing. And it's already built into the numbers you've seen already. The other 200,000 we're reducing is just the 200,000 for the last two years we've taken out of their budget to apply fund balance to. Um, so, so it still gives them about a uh, one and a half percent increase in levy over the following year, but it brings it more in line with what they've been um, the last year or two. So after those two large adjustments, um, our operating levy is about half million dollars over where we can be. 
The next section is the special purpose levy. All of those pluses and minuses, if I compare the 2021 to the 2020, it's about a $35,000 increase in special purpose levy. Um, we did with ambulance, they've got 140,000 budgeted for some monitors they have to buy. We did pull out about $190,000 worth of ambulance and striker cots for next year to, to defer it to the next year. Um, and then the local bridge aid is up quite a bit from the year before. That is what it is. It is what it is, but the effect of that is, is um, you know, if we're trying to stay within five or six percent levy increase, that kind of reduces what right. we have available from the operating side. Right. So we, we, I guess my point was we really don't have any control over that. We don't. Um, so anyway, overall levy request right now is, uh, you know, about twelve million three hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars. Okay. Um, so then down at the bottom, I don't have anything built into this schedule at, on the top for the additional borrowing that we're planning to do. That's some of the stuff at the bottom here. Okay. Um, so we're suggesting for capital improvement to borrow 340000 which we'll look at the capital improvement program next. The county e-bridge we talked about, we're going to add that to borrowing. Um, I'm backing out the levy allowed so I can kind of get to what the true increase is. So, so we've got net new construction numbers in the yeah. Department of Revenue? Yes. Okay. It, it's included above, but I'm backing it out here so we can get to what the overall increase is. Right. But that's up 20,000 plus or minus. From yes. yes. We have more net new construction. Correct. Okay. And this is a real number. Uh, yes. Um, so I come down to a tentative 2021 levy of 12743 compared to the overall 2020. So we're at a levy increase of a million four thousand dollars. Just again, I'll say I don't have the interest built into that at this point. Depending which way we go, that will increase because of the interest. But that one million four thousand right now, that's about an eight and a half percent increase over 2020 overall levy. Okay, but that doesn't. What's the difference between that eight and a half percent and the five percent on the PMA schedule? Um, well, I can tell you just because I got it written down, but if it was six percent. It would be about seven hundred and four thousand. So there would be about a three hundred thousand dollar difference. So it's about a hundred thousand per percent. Pardon me. It's about a hundred thousand per each one percent. Okay. But if we're paying off the million dollars in one year, that's the eight and a half percent increase when we divide it up in those oh. two years on the schedule. All right. So right. that's the that's the five and a half percent. Yes. Or will pay off prices is right. more, I'm going to call it sustainable character. Right. And the equalized value is what, 3733 or something like that now? Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mike, that county E bridge and the grant you're kind of waiting on or thinking you might get. Has the tribe contributed to that bridge? Or was, I don't remember what Gary told us in public works. My understanding, that's the one we're waiting on, but I'm not certain of that. Yeah, but I understood him. He wasn't here this month. Right. Last month, I didn't, I understood that he didn't think we were going to get it. Um, to get it. No, that's not what he shared with us. <laughs> At least me, I don't know. I, I thought he was more optimistic than how many was. Well, this is back in. August. Yeah, I mean, I haven't talked to him since August. Yeah. So maybe you have more of an update than I have. But that's why, you know, it's in this budget and funded within this budget because we're not sure of right. the outcome. So if we get it, then we pay ourselves. Right. Uh, 
but that's another example of setting that up to borrow for it takes away from what we can use on the operating side. But you know, we have a, we have a subcommittee, Surrey County LCO, Mr. Kinsley's on it. You have to meet. Right, and Susie Taylor, I mean, we could task them with this because I think you need to pursue it. I mean, sometimes we have to push the tribe a little bit to get them to help with this grant or talk to the BIA roads department. Right. And a lot of these things can materialize if you just push them a little bit. Okay. Well, so I just wouldn't give up on that until we've exhausted everything. All right. I will relay that to Gary. Relay that to Gary and then to me, and then I could put Ron and Ms. Taylor on that. Okay. Perfect. So uh, that tentative increase that you're looking at, again, that ties back to what you saw on Brian's schedule. Right. right. So on the project process, are you about finished? Is this as good as we can do? Or are you still working on other things that might lower the well, there's some there's some unknowns out there. Um, we do not know what our health insurance increase right. or decrease is going to be, right. and it's starting to sound like it's probably going to be late in the process before we do find out. Um, We've got six percent built into the budget now. Uh, six? Yeah. I thought it was eight at one point. Yeah. Eight. Oh, it is eight. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but in our conversations uh, with Horton, who's our consultant on, on health insurance, we had a, a meeting with them this week, um, just kind of going over the health insurance. You know, they're, they're out to market to see you know if there's other carriers that will bid on us this year um, and get some pricing. Uh, the renewals always come in late. Uh, they're talking like October, um, so we won't know about that until probably October. But we're also looking at you know the HRA contributions. Uh, that the county uh, makes. Um, you know, we've got an HRA contribution. Employees can do a FSA or flex uh, kind of contribution. Right. And how those play into the premiums. You know, we're trying to, to see if there's any interplay that we can do there that will help lower the premium costs by uh, rearranging some things on those products. Um, so we're starting some work on that as well. Property and casualty insurance, we know what that is. Be. I do not know what that is because I have to have at least a draft audit report before they'll okay. quote it. And I'm being told they're they're here yesterday and today wrapping up some stuff. April thinks we'll still be able to have financials by the uh, October committee meeting. But in, in terms of just working with the department, this is as good as it's going to be. We got the unknowns are. Of like third party, I guess, control, so to speak. Is that right? Correct. Okay. What's the contingency in the budget? 50. 50 plus, I got money set aside for, for personnel increases, and I'm not sure we set that yet. Well, well it's one and a half percent. That's what I got budgeted with a July 1 yes. right, implementation date. Okay. Got a question. Um, you have for health insurance, you have estimated eight. What did we pay last year? Wasn't it higher than that? <laughs> it was. I think it was like it came know. in quite high, and I think you got it down right. some, but I don't remember what you got it down to. Good question. Yeah, I don't have the number. But it was significant last year. We had a lot of higher claims last year, and they say we're running hot again this year, which I don't know how we can since you can't go to the doctor, but. Right. Just curious, thank you. Yeah, that got our attention. Okay. So, you know, between now and October, I'm sure things will change some. Right. Um, but as far as the running the department, things aren't going to change. It's just third party numbers that have changed. We have possible grant money that was written. We've got health and human service, health insurance, and probably property casualty. Workers' comp, do we know that? We do. Um, that's, that's, a bright, that's a bright spot for us. Um, the rates 
down a little bit, one or two categories were up slightly, but our um, experience modification went down quite a bit. It went from 1.23 or 2.4 down to 0.94. Yeah. Okay. So that's a nice savings. But that's reflective of, of the work that we've been doing with uh, workers' comp and, and right. roads lately, but especially in keeping an eye on claims and getting those reported promptly and followed up on um, to ensure that uh, uh, you know we keep those costs low. So um, for work, especially and the department directors uh, who've had claims have been working pretty hard on improving that, and that's right. been good. So we're looking at an eight and a half percent property tax increase if we borrow the what the one million four and pay it back correct within a couple of months yeah two percent yeah yeah but i would think it's going to be two and a half but that's what the, uh, the board of commissioners of public land is quoting well that's what they're quoting right we like i said we spoke to a local bank he just indicated he could beat it Right. right, but I mean, that one tenth or one half of one percent of interest that couldn't be much. Yeah. Right. So, is that our choice? The eight and a half percent property tax increase, borrow, pay off, and save, save maybe what ten, eleven thousand dollars in interest for the taxpayers, or go to five percent increase in cost of taxpayers. 10,000 or so more. Is that the, yes, that's I, the choice? Yes, I think that's the choice. Um, and like you said, you know, the model kind of sets you up smoothing. But. Yeah, I mean, the model gives us something more sustainable because if we have an 8.5% increase this year, borrowing, short term borrowing, what's it going to look like next year? Probably going to be more than well, it de that depends um, on the courtroom if we're going to start the borrowing and building next year or if it's going to be the following year. But excluding the courtroom, the borrowing next year will be more because we're pulling in that dam. Right, right. So we're going from just that alone, we're going from about a million to a million three because of the dam. Right. So if we go with the short term route, we're going to have a softer, softer tax increase some years up, maybe up and then down and then up. Correct. You know, I understand the position you're in. I think they do anyway. But it's just, it's still wrong in my mind. It's wrong to borrow with this everyday operating. But obviously, we don't have any choice. Yeah, but we're not borrowing for operations. We're borrowing for equipment, capital items that frees up the money for operating. So I mean, it's it's okay. semantics in a sense, but it is proper and, and legal to borrow for capital, and that's what we're doing. And um, you know, we just don't want to give the impression that that's you know that we're borrowing for operating because that's not. The intent, nor is that uh, what we're trying to do. Yeah, so those poor choice of words in my <clears throat> right. You know, I for one, and I don't want to speak for all the public, but I would not prefer the sawtooth effect. Right. I mean, we budget. I know my wife and I open our tax bill and we look at that, and we already have some idea. You know, I think most of the public understands that there's going to be a bump because we're building this courthouse, and everyone's going to see all this construction going on here. Um, something that we can budget and predict in the next few years would be, to me, the better way to go. Right. Versus to see a huge bump and then, whoa, it's down here this year and next year. Yeah. That's just my thought. Yeah, I mean, I started with short-term borrows the only way, and I'm moving more towards of the plan, you know, property, gradual property tax. What's Mr. W think? I really agree. I think I saw two this year. I'm not going to be well accepted by the community. You know, right. it's, it looks like we're not budgeting, you know. Yeah. Troy and Don, do you guys have any comments about 
short-term borrowing versus longer-term borrowing? I do. I, I know it's very tempting to save on the interest, but, but it going all over the place is not going to be well received. And, you know, however we explain it, it's, there's a huge difference between 5% and 8.5%. And I, I would much rather even it out. Um, I, I think I can explain that to folks. 8.5% is, is just, it's too much. Thank you. Don, do you have a comment? Yeah, I feel the same way. It's easier to explain short term versus the long term versus the eight and a half percent. It's not going to be well received either way, but it, it'll be a little bit easier to swallow. Okay. So, Mr. Kinsley? Oh, I disagree. Yeah. If I get a bill, I want to get a paid. Right. right. Oh, okay. And we have a opportunity to do that by living and pay the and saving money. All right. So what do we want to do? Then? Do we want to and if this is this is information or is this an action item? Um I don't I just don't know how it's well or just tentative guidance for you guys. It it's certainly provides us guidance to know how to kind of finalize this for okay. October. Um, there is on the agenda today an initial resolution. Right. Um, we will need to fill in the amount up to or not to exceed right. for that. But there will be a follow-up resolution with more of the details of Right. The actual method we're going to go and right, but what the right this resolution just locks in. We're going to do it. We get our seventy-five percent vote. Yes, yes. So Bruce, what are your thoughts? Huh? What What are your thoughts? My thoughts are I'm, I have to agree that the the level tax increases is the way to go. I as I said, I started out with short-term borrowing, and that's the only answer, but. As I look at this plan, I'm more on the just that level yeah. property tax increase. Okay, you. What do you guys want to do now? Does, does that give you? Yes. Yeah, I, I think that uh, gives us enough direction, and I think uh, not a unanimous consensus, but I think the consensus is. Um, to, to go with the plan as Brian had laid it out and we'll, we'll put the budget together that way, um, provided that, um, you know, the, the resolution, the initial resolution for the um, bonding or the funding um, goes through, then, you know, that's that's the key that we need uh, in order to borrow that million uh, for next year. Right. Um, and so then that'll get baked into the budget and then, um, presented to the county, the administrator's budget will include that and then hand it over to the county board and then the county board can have more discussion and change that obviously uh, at your discretion. So it's not locked in in the sense that right. you, know, you can't change it from here on. And your administrator's budget will go to the board in October? Yes. Okay. October, publish, final in November. Correct. Okay. Right. Good. So, okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Please raise their hand. So then the next item is what the EMS budget? Yeah, this is just a summary of the EMS levy. Um, if you again the top third of that is the operating levy, the next section is capital. Uh, so looking at total operating levy, there is an increase there from 20 to 21. But if you look at the capital section, there's a decrease in capital. Overall, the EMS levy is right now projected to come down about $20,000. So, okay. And so the, the mill rate, the rate to 100,000 is down too. Yeah, yeah that's slightly. Like the equalized value up right. from the 20,000. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, but when you're 
Yes. <laughs> the, down is down. the budget deficit is up to me. Well, there's, yeah, there's so, you know, there's cost increases. Um, you know, there's a lot of employees in this department. So when you're giving raises, it has more of a dollar impact on the budget from year to year. Plus, I did bump their personal budget a little bit, hoping to get a little bit more in line with what they actually come out at the end of the year. Plus, we're picking up Ojibwa. You know, Ojibwa's coming online now. Okay, she's got the operating expenses yeah. for there. Yeah. And how's our billing coming or election? No. Um, so I did, um, Bruce, I, I forgot to put on the agenda the account COVID account tracking. I do have it for you to hand out after the meeting as information. Um, the ambulance billings through August are slightly down, we're 25 or 30 thousand dollars down from a year ago at, as of August. Um, so we're starting to hold our own there. And you know, I, I think Nate is still saying earlier in the year, I think the runs were down, but I do think now, these last few months, the runs are up, is what I think he's saying. How oh, are the collections up over last year? Collections are through August, 761,000, and they were 784,000. So it's it's down slightly, but I'm hoping now that they're getting busier that it turns around. And that's helpful because I think, you know, as, as the number of runs went down, we're still doing the same amount of 911. I mean, right. those calls kind of remain the same. It's, it's because people weren't going for the doctor and having those transfers that uh, the run volume went down a bit and those transfers are the ones that are a little more not profitable but if, you know we lose money on the 911 calls uh, transfers we do a little bit better on so when we aren't doing trans transfers that hurts the bottom line uh, a bit so those are coming back now they are okay yeah and then the other issue with the ambulance uh, billing is the uh, billing company that we use has been sold and uh, got a, a meeting coming up with uh, the new owners of the ambulance billing company to make sure that they're going to continue to our satisfaction. Okay. And which, who is, is it another committee review the ambulance budget? Uh, public safety. They do. And you, you're saying you built in some extra personnel costs. I yeah, I added fifty thousand to their personnel costs. Um, okay. I, I don't recall now if we did that before or after the public. I think we did it before the public safety meeting. Okay. Any questions on the ambulance billing? And ambulance budget, I should say. Will you recognize public comment? Yes, you are. Um, thank you. Um, I noticed there are some questions that are being asked that where it would have been helpful to have those prior year actual and year to date actual columns for comparison purposes. Uh, the other question I wanted to raise here too is in this summary schedule that you're looking at now. Uh, it does not show the amount that's going to be assessed to the municipalities in Sawyer County versus the collections that will be coming in from the out of county towns. And so I'm wondering where do those appear on this schedule? Um, so those don't actually appear on this schedule. They're just kind of part of the budget deficit amount. So even though you're collecting fees from outside uh, towns outside Sawyer County, that number is rolled into your deficit. I'm sorry, I was looking at something. What was the question? Well, the, the fees from the outside county are rolled into your income, correct? Which yes, that is correct. That's into the deficit. Correct. Okay. That is correct. I'm sorry, I was. Correct. 
looking because I do have. Uh, We've got an agenda item 12 that I think would deal with, with that. Would yeah. It? Yes, it does. Okay. But I was just looking. Um, did I not? Did that not get, get back to you when we get to agenda item 12? Did that not get into the pack? Maybe. I'll have to go get a handout because I do have a handout somewhere. Okay. All right. But they are budgeted currently in the 21 budget at the same rate they're in the 20 budget. Well, okay, let's defer that discussion until we get down the item. I think that is well. Is that okay? Yep. All right. All right. So then the next item is capital improvement project request. The first page is the summary schedule. Uh, just a couple things I want to point out uh, on that first page. Right in the middle under revenues, the last revenue item, I have it in bold. It says proceeds from debt issuance equipment, 338,000. Uh, that's the 340,000 figure that I was showing right. earlier. Uh, and then a couple lines above that, it says proceeds from debt issuance facility, seven million. That's that's just an estimate, and it doesn't uh, necessarily correspond to what's on Brian's schedule, but that's yet to be worked out. Right, but that's of no consequence, is it? It just flows into the correct balance. Correct, right? correct, and then it flows out the following year, right. so it, it zeroes itself out. Mike, how, sh how comfortable are you with the 40,950 beginning balance? Um, I need to, the, the beginning fund balance, I need to work on that number. I just haven't gotten back to it. Okay, so it, it's a good guess, but it has changed. Um, yeah, by the October meeting, I'll have that number narrowed down. Okay. And you scrub these numbers, you met with your department guys, and you're comfortable with the, the request for 2021? Um, yeah, I mean, we can go through the list a little bit on the second page. Um, there's some IT equipment that has come off of the schedule because we were able to get a grant this year. And I don't know what that was for. But. Uh, it was a Sarah email. Uh, it was about 13000 So, yeah, we pulled that off. Um, there was maintenance. The, the equipment that Tim was talking about earlier in the meeting was actually in the 2021 year, but we found arrangements to do it this year, so that's come off. Um, towards the bottom of that page is fleet stuff, the zoning vehicle, 35,000. I think we're going to come back and revisit that one a little bit. We yeah. might consider buying a vehicle that's a couple of years old versus brand new. And by the records, need for snowmobile and trailer. Um, so, um, yeah, so he's using a grant to pay for that. Okay, so that's in the revenue. I see it down yep. below. Yep. Okay. Um, public safety. Yeah. Okay, before we leave page 10, yep. we're borrowing, it looks like, for fleet lease payments. Is that proper? Um, I, I guess I'm going to have to talk to the auditors a little bit on that one. Okay. Um, I mean, if it's not, it's not going to change the overall because then I'm just going to put it on the operating side. The, the overall number isn't going to change. Right, but the operating, right, the amount of money available for operating is just down by 30000 Right. Okay. Um, all right, so over on the public safety side, there was an ambulance we removed at 140000 and Striker cots, 45 or whatever it was pulled up, kind of 
pushed to the following year. Those cardiac monitors, they have to purchase next year. They have to purchase them. Yeah. You can't buy them in November, December of next year and pay for them in the following year. There's a date. Yeah, it's, it's a spring date. I forget what the date is, but that's um, okay. a, a legal thing that they, they can't use the other ones anymore. They're obsolete or whatever. Law change that you can't use that. Which then means everybody's got to buy um, new ones uh, by that date. Um, so th we did talk about you know the ambulance uh, purchase, the, and we moved that out. We had right. talked initially about uh, doing the, um, what is that called? The, for the refurbishing, Re yeah, uh, using the same chassis but yeah. putting a new box on it. Or um, but that didn't work for next year either. So we'll uh, we'll address that in the following year, either by getting uh, one of those redone and a new one uh, to get caught up, uh, so that we have the proper uh, fleet location on the ambulance. But with that uh, purchase of those uh, cardiac monitors, it just uh, didn't work out to get the ambulance. Okay. Yeah, are there any grants available, partner? Uh, there's there was a grant opportunity that came up last week, and I've got Nate looking at it. Um, well, yeah, I mean that we're always looking for those opportunities. For yeah. more COVID money or anything, can you tag that to the mm. COVID costs and for monitoring or I don't patients for a replacement of an ambulance? I don't know how that ties. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, sure. If Tom says okay, then sure. we're good. <laughs> there one more shorter breath and then monitor. Yeah. Uh, down under law enforcement, jail, um, the court services, rifles, we push a year. Um, I think that's all we did there. Airport, the numbers here have not changed. Health and Human Services, this is veterans. Nothing has changed here. Conservation development, this is, forestry is looking at a UTV trailer. Um, it shows on here as a borrowing for that. Greg is, um, asking the DNR, he's got some fund balance. I can't think of the name of the program off the top of my head, but he's asking the DNR if we can use fund balance to cover half of that purchase. Right. Well, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's that's what I know with capital. Right. So the bottom line is you guys are work for the department and you scrub the numbers best you can and this is where they're coming. We've got a couple pending like forestry, but yeah. Nothing big it sounds like. Okay. So that's the general questions on the capital part of the budget. And you built in borrowing on each of these categories, I see too. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's agenda item nine and 10. Uh, right. Then we move to item 11, right. which is the initial resolution. Uh, if we're going to move forward with that, we need to determine a not to exceed amount. Um, I, know, I know our projection right now is a million four thousand. Right. It might be I would ask if you would consider increasing it something more than that, just as a not to exceed, right? Just in case something comes up or health insurance so, or, so like I said, interest needs to be added yet. What's your recommended amount? I don't know. Million fifty, million one. I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is that? I mean. Is that so off? Is that right now? I go one point one if you are comfortable with that. I mean, then once I get the real number in there, um, right? You know, it is what it is. But if, if it's higher than that, then you've got to come back and do this. So right. Then we got to get another, you know, three quarters vote. Right. So we'll get the next deal. 
Okay. Motion by Mr. Kempley to move the resolution forward uh, with an inactive seed amount of $1.1 million. Is there a second? Oh, Marty, yes. you're fine. He went already. Okay, must be done in a second. Yeah. Yeah. Did we have a second? Yeah, I do that. Yeah, we did. Don, you're not muted. I'm going to run and get that scheduled. Okay. Linda has her hand raised. I think that's from before. Linda, do you have a comment? Yes, ma'am. Okay. No, not on this one. Thank you. All right. So, yes. In this, go ahead, Tom. In discussion, then, so there will be a separate resolution then to follow for the borrowing for the courthouse. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, sure that's, that was going to be my comment as well. So what this resolution uh, accomplishes is it, it authorizes um, us to proceed with the uh, issuance of those bonds. And so this is the initial resolution that binds you to that obligation uh, and allows us to proceed with um, making all the details right. with the bank and that sort of thing. So this is the one that requires the three quarters vote. You'll see another resolution once we get those uh, details finalized with the bank, that'll be another resolution. Uh, that'll be a, a simple majority at that point because we've already authorized the three quarters vote. When we get the, the final uh, numbers and, and commitment on the uh, courthouse, if you wish to proceed with the courthouse, then you would see another resolution similar to this one that would do the same thing. That would obviously be for more money, uh, but, but that would also require the three quarter Bolt to obligate us uh, to proceed with uh, making the arrangements for that borrowing as well. So that's, I'm sorry, go ahead. So that's something that, you know, the, the county board will be discussing um, next week some options on the courthouse. That's a closed session item, um, which will give us direction then on, on how that should proceed. Okay. But the courthouse resolution will be, a, the first one will be a simple one page like this, be followed with a detailed resolution. Uh, with, with the terms and conditions required by the, I guess the bond council. Right? That is correct. Yeah. Okay. And then, but that once we get to the two thirds vote would be for the simple resolution followed by a majority vote for the bond council associated resolution with detail. Is that right? You said two thirds, but it's three quarters on the okay. That's right. Yeah. Three quarters. I was kind of hoping to. Yeah. And it'll be another one not to exceed. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. So we have a vote here. Okay, we've got. Is there any more discussion? Okay, if not, all in favor of moving the resolution forward to the board at 1.1 million? Aye. Okay. Opposed? Motion carries. We should probably put in 1.1 or. Is that we'll just write it in, or do we want to type it in and do a resign? Whatever you want. We can uh, fill it in and then have it resigned at, at the board with the right number. Okay. And, and we'll move it on to county board next week. Yeah. Right. Or why don't you just give us a signature page and we can sign it down. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Now we're trusting you now. So. <laughs> Adding a little bit into me. Yeah, that's go over. Okay. Well, Mike is coming back with information for item 12 on the agenda. Is that right? That is correct. Uh, Brian is his name? Oh, Brian Della, yes. I think he's probably gone. 
Nine thirty is good. Thank you. Linda has her hand raised again. Okay. Uh, Linda Zilmer here. If you're waiting for Mike to come back, can I have my public comment now or should I wait? I don't know what your public comment is. But why don't we wait for Mike? The tweet just left the room as well, so we'll hang yeah. on. So we lost Mike and Tweed went to find him. Right here. Here's Mike. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Should we jump in? Okay, can, can Linda see this? Um, no, not at this point. It's it's similar to what we put out for public safety, um, except for the last column, which we can talk about. Okay. Um, so as you know, Sarah County Ambulance provides service to three townships in Washburn County, Town of Bass Lake, Town of Birchwood, Town of Stone Lake. There's MOUs on an annual basis with these townships to, to provide funding to Sawyer County for uh, being the first contact or responder when there's calls in those townships. Um, under the current payment column, you see the payments that each township is currently making. Um, Town of Bass Lake, 9,700. Town of Stone Lake, 9,700. Town of Birchwood, 2,400. Um, and that's what's built into the 2021 budget at this time. The question is, at what level should they be paying that? Under what theory or formula should they be assessed for that uh, service. So the last three columns, there's three options there. Um, a $29 per diem rate, and that's just based on, um, we know there's an ambulance service that covers Washburn County, much of Washburn County, and we know that they're making some proposed changes in their rates to the Washburn County municipalities. Um, and this rate is just a little bit more than what um, they're putting out there to, to the Washburn County. Um, we, we feel like, you know, they're a basic level ambulance service. We're an advanced level ambulance service. So we provide a little bit higher level of service than what that particular service does. Um, so that's the $29 level. Uh, there's a $40 level. And I don't remember why we chose 40. Um, and then there's the last column is more of a um, based on the same allocation method that we're, we're allocating ambulance costs to all of the Sawyer County yeah. townships. Do the towns affect that? The Sawyer County, not Sawyer, Washburn County towns also pay an ambulance fee with their Washburn County taxes? No, because there's not an, the, the, the Washburn County does not have an ambulance service. Mm -hmm. So each town has to contract with somebody on their own. Right, okay, so if they, these three towns had to contract with with either so, us or North. Right, or the or ambulance in Washington County too? There isn't an ambulance. Nothing North ambulance. North Ambulance serves most of okay. Washington County. So what would North Ambulance be charging? Well, we're hearing their rates are 
um, I believe they're paying between 20 and 21 dollars now. Their proposal is, uh, was it 20, 29? Somewhere in that ballpark. I, I don't remember the exact number. Um, so would it be equitable to charge them the same rate that they could get at North? Well, that's, and I think that's probably where we came up with the $40 rate because we're advanced level okay. of service. We thought, well, maybe we should increase it a little more than what um, North is doing. Okay. Uh, one of our one of our concerns. So just so the listeners know, um, the the last column, the numbers we're coming up with is town of Bass Lake would be twenty one thousand seven thirty three, Birchwood thirty six thousand six twenty, Stone Lake twenty three thousand seven eighty four. That's um, equalized value at thirty or three point or point three three four per hundred thousand. Yeah, that our our citizens are paying back. Right. Okay. Um, is that that's based on taxes or is that based on the um, population? No, that one's based on um, equalized value. Equalized value. A um, little bit concerned to make that big of a jump at least all in one year. That's, if you look at what they're paying now uh, versus a proposal, that's pretty big increase to the townships. Do we have any figures for other neighboring counties like West County and Bayfield and Douglas? I, I do not. West County is the only one that does uh, some ambulance service um, around here. Uh, I, but backing up a step, you know, the, the uh, subsidy that the Sawyer County taxpayers use or are charged for the ambulance service um, gets charged from the whole county. The county is an entity by itself, um, just like a Washington Township is an entity uh, for this purpose. So in Sawyer County, um, we are allowed to uh, tax Sawyer County residents for countywide EMS service. So when the townships uh, within Sawyer County pay that million dollars uh, that we subsidize the ambulance service for, it is based on the tax rate um, for those towns or equalized value and it gets split up based on equalized value because it is a tax. Um, as we had looked at uh, the surrounding areas um, and how other agencies charge such as North and other uh, counties that do tax or, or that do ambulance service, it's more of a user fee than a tax. We don't tax other uh, people right. outside of our entity. So uh, the, the model that we had started using way back when was a population type uh, calculation and calculated a, a user fee, which is where the, uh, you know, the fee per resident kind of came from initially. So, that's the way the fee was set up initially, and it hasn't kept up with the cost over time. So we're trying to establish you know, what that true cost should be on a population basis. Um, and so that's that's where the calculations had come from. But well, do we know what our actual cost is to provide the service? I mean, what is the cost to provide the service to Bass Lake, for example? Yeah. Well, yeah, based on you know runs and whatnot, and then you know each of those residents that get service pay the bill, hopefully, or they get charged. So it's, it's, this is the part of the service that is subsidized by the people who don't pay the bills, essentially. Yeah, and the better care reduction. Right. Well, it is a big jump. I mean, is uh, it's something that's halfway in between palatable for us? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, my only concern is, is, you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna lose the townships no. Purely from a budgeting point of view, from, from my perspective. Right. Right. Um, but we lost one, didn't we? Stennett? Didn't we lose one? Stennett has, has asked for service, uh, but has not signed on for service. They've asked again this year. Okay. But they're not willing to pay. Well, North has been under what we have right. quoted them, so they've stayed with North. Yeah. Well, I understand. Right. So do you, 
is this issue our issue or is this issue public safety and well, it's essentially public safety because it's it's kind of a balance between um you know how much we charge and and what the market will bear on those I, there is mutual aid of course um, okay. as well right. um but to be, you know, the first responder to provide ALS service, um, you know, to these neighboring counties, and this is a lot of the discussion that happens in public safety is, you know, sometimes they don't know when they cross the county line or what township they're in when they right. go to an address, and you turn around when you get to a Stanet address right. because there's Stanet, and uh, so there is some give and take there, but uh, it does cost us money to provide the service, and uh, you know, we need to collect on that uh, as we can. So. Okay, so how do you, I mean, I've heard, I guess, suggestions that the towns and the legal entities within Sawyer County who don't use our ambulance should not be charged uh, for the, the 3366 six for you know, the levy per thousand for ambulance. Say that again. Well, the, there are towns or the political entities within Sawyer County who don't use our ambulance, they contract with others virtually, I think, or something in that area. Well, that's a statement that has been made that's not entirely true. Okay. They, there are uh, entities that do, or at least one entity that does contract with somebody else in addition to getting service from Sawyer County, but they get, you know, the, the service that they get from their contracted uh, provider gets there quicker than we do, but we still get dispatched. We still send a medic as they request or an ambulance if they request. Um, so they do get service uh, right. in that entity. So, and it, it is a tax, you know, it, it's just like any other tax. You know, if you don't call the sheriff, that doesn't mean you don't pay the sheriff bill. Right. Like you are part of the county and you pay the tax and right. it's allocated. Yeah, you're paying for the capacity. Yeah. Not specific service, okay. So with then this issue, we should go back to the public safety committee and you will you the you two would make a recommendation to the committee on what to do with the rates for the out of county services that we provide. Or do you want us okay. to make the decision about either way we can go back if you feel that's yeah. Well no, I just I don't want to I'll ask Mr. Chairman here I don't want to step on another committee's jurisdiction or trying to invade their jurisdiction. So can we should we make the recommendation? Mr. Now? Paulson? Yes. Linda Zilmer, may I have public comment now? Sure. Um, my experience with the Birchwood ambulance goes back to the 1960s, which I think probably predates most of the people <laughs> there in your room. So I want to give some historical perspective, but not going back that far. Prior to 2008, the Birchwood, the village of Birchwood had a fire department and an ambulance service. They have provided and they had provided for many years that service to the full town of Birchwood and the town of Edgewater in Sawyer County. Um, starting in 2008, uh, six or seven towns in the village of Birchwood decided to form what's now called the Birchwood Four Corners Emergency Services District and it's a basic level uh, ambulance service. Um, early on, part of the town of Birchwood in Washburn County uh, went to being served from the Stone Lake Ambulance. It's a matter of response times. Um, subsequent to that happening around 2008 or nine, another section of the town of Birchwood became served by uh, Sawyer County Ambulance. What was happening prior to your, I believe it was the 2017 ambulance study that Sawyer County did, those towns in Birch or in Washburn County were paying nothing for ambulance service. Uh, they were basically not being assessed by Sawyer County at all. When the formula was developed, and I don't know how it de got developed based on population, other than maybe that's what North Memorial was doing, those towns were significantly underassessed, and most specifically the town of Birchwood because under the Birchwood Four Corners Ambulance Service, 
the part that is a town Birchwood that is served, they are assessed on equalized property values. And looking at that one figure of maybe, I think it's $33,000 for the town of Birchwood, that's probably close to what the um, Birchwood ambulance service is charging for the part we serve. So it has always been a matter of, first of all, not being fair that the Washburn County towns are charged much less than the Sawyer County towns. But when you look at our area, census population does not reflect an, uh, anywhere near the reality of a basis for charging, whether you call it a fee or a tax. Um, our census headcount is very low versus the population that is largely non-resident property owners. So take into consideration, first of all, that up until maybe two, 2017, those Washburn County towns were not being charged at all. Then they were charged at a, at, at a significantly less or lower rate, and Mr. Schleter raised this in public safety, that this was supposed to have been addressed years ago. Each year I come before the county at budget time and raise this issue, as well as last year, the two Edgewater uh, supervisors, county supervisors, uh, Mrs. Nyberg and Mr. Bassett attended at least two Edgewater town meetings to address this issue of Edgewater is served by Birchwood Four Corners Emergency Service District. It's not Sawyer County. And unfortunately, with Mr. Voigt, uh, who was the chairman of the committee at that time resigning, the issue never came forward last year. But Edgewater still maintains that we were, they were not included in the discussions or the analysis for the ambulance study. We are primarily served by Birchwood. So there is still this issue of Edgewater list last year being assessed $66,000, while in the town of Birchwood is moving things under Sawyer County Ambulance, which makes the cost higher for us because they're getting such a deal with you. So there are a lot of factors at play. Um, and, and I do think that for making a jump this year to the Washburn County towns, it's about time. And then also this issue of uh, considering Edgewater being served by Sawyer County uh, is something that really needs to be addressed. Thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Should we be thinking of making a recommendation on charges for the Washington County towns that we serve, or should that go back to uh, public safety for a more thorough discussion? Mike, what is your thought? Um, public safety, yes. Yeah. Public safety. Okay. But we strong, I guess, Ken, the consensus of the committee is that we strongly encourage the rates to be increased to a more reasonable level. Okay. All right. Okay. I think we're out of time. Unless there's anything else other than like you want to quickly go over your schedule of whatever you call it. All the account tracking, COVID 19 account tracking. Sure. Um, Any big issues? Sales tax? Sales tax, we're still ahead of sales tax over a year ago, though the gap is shrinking. They're almost the same through August collections. Hopefully that trend reverses these last several months, typically our bigger sales tax months for us because that's when all the festivals are going on and the, those aren't gonna happen this year. So yeah, we're, we're watching that. Uh, Stumpage is a little bit ahead of pace over last year. Um, I mean, they've got, Greg said last, well, yesterday, they, Greg said yesterday they got about uh, uh, 350,000 out to be collected. And once that's collected, that will increase your revenue. That they build? Yeah, that they build. Okay, good. Okay. Um, you know, we're starting to see departments, um, we were running ahead of pace compared to last year. I'm starting to see where that's shrinking a little bit. We're, we're getting closer to what we were comparable a year ago. So maybe okay. that's indicating a trend downward. I don't know. We'll have to watch. Okay. I think we're out of time. 
That is true. All right. Well, we're adjourned then. Thank you, everybody. You know, leave the I would say on for you. Yeah, but it's not required. You can see if there's a hand raised right now.